Alrighty, in the previous video we set up the magnified optic as well as a red dot. In this video we want to set up the suppressor and actually make it modify the sound for the default implementation of the firearm. So currently it's unsuppressed. Let's go ahead and set this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our tutorial folder under accessories and we're going to go ahead and create a new blueprint class. And if we look through the classes, so if we search for SKG, here we can actually kind of see a whole list. So we have the attachment actor as the base. And like I said in the previous video, you don't need to use mine as parents, but we have a muzzle. So we're gonna go ahead and select the muzzle and just name it BP underscore tutorial suppressor. And we're gonna leave the default scene root because we wanna rotate it by 90 degrees. And we want to also add it as a static mesh. So we're gonna add a static mesh component and go ahead and set it as the suppressor, then rotate it 90 degrees, like so. So there's not really a whole lot. In this case, we want to do it, check that it's a suppressor just for the sake of, well, test, testing later on. I can't speak for some reason. And for the most part, that's it. We do need to add the tag, just like before. So let's click on our mesh, add a component tag, SKG attachment. And then that takes care of that. And then we want to add a muzzle socket to it. So let's go ahead and go to the mesh. And we're going to add a socket, name it S underscore muzzle. This can also be changed. And make sure it's correct. So X and Z up. So that is fine. Give it a little bit of space. And save. So for the most part, we're pretty much done. Uh, if we head over to our tutorial M4, we can add another attachment, like so. I'm going to name this one attachment underscore muzzle. And here we want to add a data asset for all the possible parts. So to do so, we're going to do the exact same thing again. So we're going to create another data asset. So miscellaneous data asset, select the attachment, compatibility data, or primary data asset. Name it DA underscore tutorial muzzle. Add an element. And we're just going to give the actor class of the tutorial suppressor. Save that. Go to our firearm. Add that as a possible attachment. Tutorial muzzle. And then we're going to give it the default attachment of tutorial suppressor. I can actually close those. All right, so we can compile and save. And now let's go ahead and work on positioning it. So here I have the display attachment index. Set it to zero so it shows the suppressor. And let's see, why are you rotated? Should have been in the correct orientation. Oh, I think that's just due to how it has the setup for the uh, preview. But for the time being, we can rotate it by 90, and we'll just have to make sure we rotate it back. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. So let's get it pretty close. Yeah, they already have the locking lugs kind of set up. So we'll set it up. Let's see, does this have like a capture where they rotate? Or is it cut the same way? Okay, it looks like it's cut the same way all the way through. So we'll just have it slot in like so. And I guess ideally, You'd want to rotate it so it locks in place, but screw it. So we're going to go ahead and hit play, and you'll see it's rotated off to the side, like so. So that's why we want to correct it. So we want to reset the rotation and hit play. And now we have a suppressor at the end of our muzzle. So that's the whole reason of you want to have your firearm and all of your parts kind of rotated and oriented in the same direction, so you don't have to deal with annoyances like that. But now when we shoot, as you can tell, we're playing the suppressor sound. So that took all of like a minute. And this also will add some other additions to it. So for example, let me go to my firearm and try to find something related to the... Let's go all the way down at the bottom again. Do, do, do. I'm blind as a bat. Oh, here it is. 
So under poses, collision settings, I'll go ahead and perform a debug trace for uh, visualizing the collision. So you can see, here's basically where the end of the muzzle is. So here's your muzzle socket right there. If I take away the suppressor, so that is no longer a default part, you can see, all right, so I think I rotated my muzzle socket off on the M4 a bit. Yes, I did. Not exactly sure when I did that. All right, so let's rotate that. Make sure it says 90 and 90. So that should be completely straight now. There we go. So you can see it's following the actual muzzle. So if I move the socket closer, so for example, I move it right up against the muzzle device, you can see it actually is manipulated by it. So that's really kind of where you tinker with your, I guess, stuff, so to speak. But that's how it's set up to work for a collision. So you can really kind of at least see that it is affecting your muzzle position and using the uh, next muzzle device, so to speak. And same thing, this is how you set up different effects. So I'll show you here in a second. I'm curious how the muzzle collision is already set up or not. Should be. Yep, it is. That's weird, even the debug trace has that same weird lighting effect. I really hope that's kind of fixed soon in a, maybe a hotfix or something. But anyways, so let's set up a basic uh, firearm, like firing effects. So here under SKG firearm, I'm about to rename it just so I can find stuff easier. We have our default, and here we have our, let's see. Get fire Niagara systems. So, if I search for NS underscore, we have muzzle flash. So, if I remove the suppressor, we should be able to see that effect. So, you can see it's basically a bright emissive flash or fireball. Now, if we go over to the suppressor, let's go ahead and under default, nope, that's the attachment. Oh, it's up at the top. Under Fire and Agri Systems, let's search for Suppress. Here we have Suppressor Flash. Okay, now if I add the Suppressor back as a default part, and shoot, here we just have Smoke. Like so. And we don't have any reload, so. But yeah, that's how you can set up the muzzle. That's how you can set up the fire effects. And basically, it'll read through it all in the same kind of manner. And you can see here, under getting normal handle muzzle heat, I don't think that's actually a part of it yet, or a part of the new suppressor yet. That would be, need to be uh, added. Handle projectile fire and recoil. No, oh, it's called something else. Yeah, play fire effect. So here you can see I call get fire Niagara system, and that will automatically get you the fire, or the Niagara system, off of the firearm. So it basically goes down the chain. So for example, if you have a muzzle, it will get you the muzzles fire Niagara system. If you just have a barrel, it'll get you the barrels fire Niagara system. And if you have neither, it'll get you the firearms fire Niagara system. Then from there, all we do is we just simply spawn it. And we do the exact same thing with sound. So play fire sound. We do a check. So are we suppressed? Which goes down the chain and finds again. If the muzzle is set to be suppressed, then yes, we play it as a suppressed sound. If not, we play a non-suppressed sound. It's a very straightforward setup that's not hard at all, in my opinion anyways, to kind of get up and going with. But I'm going to leave this here because that's going to be the end of this. We've covered the majority that you need to know about muzzles. Next, we're going to set up a forward grip. So that'll be... Again, something else that's just a couple minutes to learn, and once you do it, you can add a new forward grip in a matter of just a couple minutes. So, anyways, that's going to wrap up this video, and I'll see you in the next one.